be helpful. Okay. Clause 18, paragraph 18. Stresses the need to enable automated analytical techniques for text and data, in other words, text and data mining, for all purposes, provided that the permission to read the work has been acquired, in other words, of lawful access to it. So she is stressing the need to enable that to occur. The next one, 19, calls for a broad exception for research and education purposes which should not only cover educational establishments, but any kind of educational research activity, including non-formal education. We'll link those two together. Then 23 stresses the effective exercise of exceptions and access to content that is not subject to copyright or related rights protection should not be limited by technological dimension. In other words, if the publisher has instituted some sort of digital rights management system or whatever type of so, uh, you can't you can't do this just so the technology that you can't do it said that the effective two things the effective exercise of exceptions that affects the data mining one should not be hindered it should basically say you can't uh, uh, use technology to stop people doing it and she also said that if there are any such technical measures uh, uh, which uh, uh, are in the source code should be made public of those technical measures so that people can justify the certain knowledge. A couple of things she doesn't think about, you know, one thing that she doesn't think about, like, uh, uh, was that. Uh, she doesn't say it should be an offence to impose technical measures where they're not just with I would like to be deep, rather than just have it open for the rights, which is actually a, 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 a legal offence. And I also would like them to, uh, or would like to see companies say uh, it should be an offence to claim copyright when you don't have copyright or to threaten infringement actions where they are unjust. Which is actually something which does exist in patent law and in trademark law, that it is, uh, it is an offence to actually threaten infringement action when it's not justified. So, but nonetheless, that's for that. So, what happens next? If the European Parliament. Quick, quick question, Charles. So, there wasn't anything about overriding other contractual. Oh, that is correct. So, unlike the offence of MSP. Unlike the UK law, which says if you sign the contract and it prevents you from doing tax and water mining, you can just ignore that bit of the contract. She doesn't recommend that. That's something else that I would like to see. And any contractual clause which purports to stop you in tax and mining shall be being in value. Uh, thank you. So, what happens next? It will be discussed by the European Parliament. Uh, lobbying of the red star. Um, I've seen comments from publishers, because uh, I follow very publishers, a uh, discussion uh, saying this is absolutely disastrous, this is dreadful, this is what we're proposing. They've asked for meetings with her, she'd already said that she had so many requests for meetings from rights holders, and she actually said, I don't have meetings with users, and users who come and talk to me. And authors, yeah. and authors, and did every interest in publishing. She said she doesn't just one uh, publishers, and it could very well be that publishers successfully lobby their various MEPs that when this report finally comes up for discussion, that enough people are opposed to it to either water it down or not. If the European Parliament doesn't, it then we've got further stages, it has to be converted into a new directive and that requires simply council of ministers uh, to be involved and that the minister from each member state who happens to have the responsibility to influence the problem. So once again the right holder will undoubtedly lobby the ministers saying don't let this happen. So I'm not saying that it's going to happen fast, it's certainly worth it, it may well be three, four, five years before anything happens, and it may not be yeah. uh, 
know what they're after. But for the time being, the UK has its advantage. And, and also, just to say that even if a directive is passed, uh, it is then up to each member correct uh, state to, to implement it as it sees fit and precisely the wording that it, it, it wants to do, and it has maybe two, three years to do it. But in the case of the UK, it wouldn't make that much difference because we've got our political law, but for other member states. But also, just to interpret that, if it came in as a directive, it would actually expand our rights here because it doesn't mention non commercial. Indeed, it doesn't, but I'm sure the rights owners will, will stick that, will get that stuck. Do you think they'll win? I think they may well win. Unfortunately. Oh, that's yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> because that make life so much easier. Absolutely. If, if, because what's commercial, what's not commercial, is a real sort of problem area. Yes. It, it yes. Yes. It, 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 so it is certainly up to Alfred Wright, Congress, yes. Yes. to uh, congratulate Miss Rader on her wonderful piece of work. They had a bit of for you written, uh, well argued. Yes. Uh, and she, it, it, it's not just text of the deadline, she made all sorts of recommendations that the lifetime of copyright should be reduced, which is also yeah, uh, would be a good thing. So, so then, I think by 17, yeah. she wanted that down to life, which is very good. Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, but it would be very interesting to see what lobbying goes on. But organisations like Content Mind, researchers who are doing text in data mind, should be saying to well, I tweeted that I thought it was a great uh, report, and I got a reply from her. So. Oh, very good. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> Can I just add a couple of brief things? I mean, if you look at the first one, so does everybody know? Just sorry, I'm I'm used to the Royal Engineers. So I don't know what I'm doing with my life. So you know it. Uh, the intellectual property. Uh, it's a plug, really. The first thing is, if you if you want a um, a, a, a relatively robust but well written take on copyright, well, there's a site called Copyright User Org site, which is oh yes, yes, which yes. put together by Bournemouth University. It's very really good, actually. It's yeah. um, so were well, you involved in that, or your group? Mm, well, not really. No, no, but, I mean, yes, as a kind of circulating around like something, and that's going to take on. <laughs> text and data mining which you may want to look at yeah. um, and also got links to various things one thing you might want to look at because it is written in law but it's worth having a look at is actually the, the legislation itself uh, it's easy to find you know, to mm -hmm. section 29a of the copyright there's a link on the copyright um, the only thing really to add is that um, there are a couple of wrinkles in the defence and the exception which you need to be aware of. One which has just been mentioned. Uh, the computational analysis of the data must be for the purpose of non-commercial research as well. Which you need to be aware of. And the second is an interesting one which may by people in the band who don't know it. If the copy, copy is accompanied by sufficient knowledge of unless this is practically impossible. Yeah. So you can see, I mean lawyers make money out of that gear. Um, and publishers put pressure into ambiguity, and you can see that there is an ambiguity. So, um, what does it mean? Where the law works, you don't know until it's been litigated. But you can see how the, the, the state, there is, there is an element of risk as to how that's going to be. Yes, you can well imagine. Well, I mean, straightforward if you're just searching a wide database, you just say copyright wide, but if you've collected together stuff from all over the place. What one of the wrinkles is, is does one know for sure who owns the individual elements of the copyright within the yeah. database? So you say you never sign copyright. Yeah. So you can see how it may well be that someone within the the database writes that I'm not owned by my wife, and you haven't given that sufficient enlargement to the right owner yeah. because it's only the absolute of 35 cutting to the tube. Mm -hmm. uh, and he mm -hmm. So we. Yeah. Yeah. We were discussing this yesterday, weren't we? Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we're currently not storing stuff that, that is not well. So they're mining CC buy material, basically, and we're not making a permanent file store of it. We were discussing whether it would be worth making a permanent file store, and then the fact that even within CC by licensed scientific papers, you might have a figure that's been, permission's been given to include the figure, but it's actually under a different term. 
Yeah, there are, I mean, that raises another issue as well, as well as the one you mentioned, is that the, the, the further dissemination of any copy work you make, so what happens to that? So you've made one copy of what Tony might they might, of course it's not just going to sit there and be one, but you do something with it, and you do something with it, you make a copy, because that's the yeah. it works, it's a big copy of violation issue. Uh, and the, <laughs> the, the, um, the provision deals with that as well, and it talks about uh, when you are transferring a copy to another person, uh, and you know it creates new regulations when you do that. And ultimately, it seems to be uh, when a copy of the work has been made under the section, which is what you've done, you get to copyright with the work is infringed if the copy is transferred to another person, except where the transfer is authorized by the copyright. Holder. What does that mean? It could yeah. mean that while you say, okay, you can mine it, but you can't do anything. Yeah. Which. Again, I come back to the point about lawyers and never as a matter of artists making money out of ambiguity. You, what you're dealing with, okay, so that's what the law is. Then how do you run an operation? The question comes down to what we're talking about. What's the question of risk? You have to be informed about the law and then they're taking an informed decision about what that's risk is. That, that was the end of the Yeah, no, I think, I think that's great. So, um, since this is going out to the world, we have nothing to hide, and I'm absolutely clear about that. Um, uh, let's review these things. Um, first of all, you know, we intend to uh, make advantage of what we uh, had rightful access to do before the harms, uh, which was uh, stuff under, effectively under a CC BY license or CC ZERO license. Um, and for the body of the text, we'll come to images in a minute, but for the body of the text, uh, we believe that CC BY is sufficient to authorize us and to do any reasonable thing with that, as long as we acknowledge it. Now, we are committed to acknowledging there are one or two technical problems with acknowledgement, which is that if uh, a work uh, then includes references to other works which are included within it, you get a, uh, sometimes a nearly infinite regress. But I think that if we make an honest approach, approach and try and acknowledge people, uh, that would be sufficient. And I also don't think that those uh, people, as moral rights holders, as opposed to you know, the intellectual property rights holders, uh, will feel that if they are, you know, the second footnote in references, which are referenced by reference, uh, that they will be in breach of that. Which, um, we do our best. It's the best of the effort. I don't think that's a big problem so long as we're aware that we know sometimes know. The place where we have a problem with sitting by material uh, in publishers is that sometimes, not very frequently, but sometimes um, image material is including from third parties who have the rights and who give the rights for it to be used in that particular instance. So they will say, picture of, or let's say, I think some of them say, I want to establish a picture of the man who is the right. So they will say, okay, um, this is made available by, where is she, the Louvre? Yeah. yeah, by the Louvre Museum, um, uh, and we thank them for it and so on. Now, if we need to do, all that, that picture, of course, is on the internet, everybody can see it, uh, but we may not be able to legally to replicate that, uh, even though um, essentially it's having no effect for what else other than you know, slightly increasing the uh, visibility. So we will certainly do our best to get the effect, but it probably will be a technical endeavor to determine where those uh, rights are within a sub part of the Does that make sense? Yes, a little right on that. What you're heading towards is an immense problem with lots of copyright areas. So, for example, the Mona Lisa, there's the image. There's a photograph of the image. So, there will be a person who took that photograph. It may or may not be, depending on how they took it to the sufficient image. may or may not be, because the personality is a technical, not the same image. So, therefore, you've got that being a because it's a set of people about what you do. There is an organisation called the Copyright Hub, which is seeking to get them. So which is seeking to make this uh, identification of rights holders easier than our witness and getting metadata and so on. But ultimately, they will always have one to get the license and the other one. So, there, this is a problem. There isn't a short term solution. There are attempts to try and have a good deal of problems with it, maybe. But yes. So, we have a particular problem with the influence. 
which is that a lot of science is based on empirical And I may differentiate. Well, exactly. I was going to use the word diagram. So the what we differentiate between roughly is an image as a photograph. A set of pixels from which you can't do anything else other than the image to get this together. And a diagram where we can uh, extract the semantics of that diagram without reproducing the diagram. Are you happy with that? Partly. Oh, there's a wrinkle there in that the, extent, the definition of what the reproduction is is, is yeah. slightly acute to what we're doing there in the same way. So, for example, if you manufacture a so you can have non-literal reproduction to some circumstances that is considered not being manageable. So that's the wrinkle there. So it may or may not. You may you may not have a clear get out of jail. Sorry to throw an ambiguity into this, but you may not have a clear to get out of jail part of it's given it in text terms with the pattern. That's a, that's a good point. Okay, so what we have done from the beginning of content right, is to say that we extract facts, right? And we use the word fact because facts are uncopyrightable. Um, obviously, what a fact is, is um, going to be ambiguous as well. But we take it to something operationally. Um, I mean, legally, the operation is whether the judge finds it's a fact or not. Right? There's not much you can do about that. Operationally, it's whether we can turn it into a semantic vocabulary and restore it as a round cricket without using information. That's very sensible. The closer you can't, because copyright in general terms only protects expressions, not the yeah. ideas behind it. However, as with copyright, there are nuances in your hand counts. Cameras around here, and there are some ways it's been approached. Oh, I'm briefly going to. So, J.K. Rowling, for example, remember where she was sued by a Sunday Road to see a um, book about yes. wizards, and Dan Brown was sued by a Sunday Road to book about Dan Brown. Now, what they were saying there was a non literal copy, non literal copy, and what the defense was is this was an idea. And in those cases, you see some sort of policing of the sense that they were Leaving that aside, I think what your approach from a practical point of view is very sensitive. The closer you can come to relaying a fact rather than expressing a fact, the closer you can come to So, uh, to give a concrete example. Uh, do you know what a chemical structure diagram is? Well, it's a picture of a model. So, I mean, yes, a, a benzene ring is a hex. Now, there is. Uh, there is virtually no other way of communicating the nature of this compound scientifically. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That is a standard way of doing it. Uh, we have semantics. I mean, I'm a chemist, so I'm not We have semantics that actually allow you to translate that picture into the fundamental representation um, and then to uh, redraw it with some other tool and so forth. Now, I would argue that the Visual formula of acetic acid or benzoic acid or whatever um, was um, extractable into a non copyrightable fact because otherwise you cannot do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, especially at that point in the green, it would expression in slightly different legal terms. The diagram is only protected under copyright and it's original. And originality in European terms of also an expression and making creative choices of expression. It's difficult to see how a diagram of benzene ring absolutely can engage the author's personality. Therefore, it's difficult to see how it's written. Therefore, it means it's unlikely to be the And in, even if we're talking about a brand new compound which had never been synthesized before, um, because it follows the standard rules, as you like to say, for the way, I, I don't think that can be claimed to be an original. So you've got a idea of uh, that specific example where you have the very minimal amount of no originality in your diagram, which is a strong argument. But supposing you have a, a novel way of using different forms to express a chemical reaction, then you are. That's a different matter. Absolutely. And um, uh, we, we recognize it. So, for example, um, uh, you know, my um, partner Judith, uh, in the structural biologist, and she drew the pictures of how proteins work and so on. And in my view, uh, they were uh, protectable because they were 
you know, the magic the expression of um, our humanity. Uh, <laughs> uh, to be obliged to say this. Uh, absolutely. Um, and so when she you explain how something works, it can be... Uh, so. so we had some examples here. One of the examples was um, uh, apparatus. So if you take apparatus, uh, would uh, we be able to distill that into a semantic representation and introduce it without violating copyright? And I think it's on the borderline, right? If you take a flow diagram of a computer program, right, uh, then if that is the only way of describing that program, uh, then it seems to me that you can come up with I don't know enough about it. flow diagrams and bits of software, but presumably it follows the same sort of rules as with chemical structure data, that they're absolutely standard ways of representing particular activity. I think that's right. Yeah. There is a particular area, uh, up the screen, and so I'm just going to mark it down there. It seems plausible to me, but computer programs are uh, an area of art. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, I apologise for saying so. No, no, that's okay. I mean, if copyright does apply to computer programs, it does. but we're thinking of something different here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're thinking of um, stuff which is. Uh, I mean, you could argue that a flow diagram was um, copyrightable as a program which wasn't explicitly licensed under a liberal license. So yes, if I write, hello world, <laughs> copyright is very much, uh, then that is a, uh, a copyright block. Right? Um, but normally I would say, hello world, um, under a package to uh, yes, the license, which so I would say that diagrams are an interesting area here and I'm, you know, I take on what I'm saying. Um, one of the things that we can do now um, is we can take uh, gra uh, graph plots, so the plot of x plus y or something and we can turn them into a table. Right. Now, I would argue that that is uh, that the data in that table are facts and not copyrightable. We'll, we'll forget about the silly genius for a second. Uh, <laughs> well, mention it now, yes. Say so, uh, a compilation of facts uh, can be copyrighted in two distinct levels. Databases and everything, but it's actually more broadly than the usual of compilation of facts. Um, if it's original, uh, it is copyright. If it's not original, but still has uh, seen a uh, significant amount of expenditure and litigation, it can be copyrighted, it can be protected under something which isn't copyrighted, which is similar. Then you can use the C to the Then the distinction is what is original, and the original doesn't necessarily mean different things. Uh, original in current requirements of the European so you've got those two different forms. Now, what flows from them is slightly different as well. But no, but there's two to it. So there's a question or something. There's such a story at the beginning of the garden that it matters what you do with the data. So given that it's legal in England, what in the UK and Japan, but it's more a grey area or illegal in other countries. What about accessing the fruits of an illegal activity in that country? So given that it's hard to do this thing, they don't take my in other countries. What about us making that, that data available? Across the world. Okay, you're talking about two different things here. Uh, if it's legal in the UK to do it, to actually do the text and data mining, and you've got the product for that text and data mining, and that product, say content mine says, help yourself world, it is available under Creative Commons license, then third parties can take it. But uh, the general rule is. Uh, that if you take something which is clearly infringing, 
So, uh, to summarise where we think our uh, major policies are, one is to extract facts from anything we have the right to read and to make those facts available um, under uh, a liberal license. Uh, at the moment, we believe some And that applies to any document that we have the right to read. Um, I would note that, unless you it might be difficult, but this has been done for um, over 150 years by humans expecting from the literature. So many, many uh, activities take the literature as it is and extract facts from them and make compilations without, uh, I believe, requiring it. Just, the, 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 a word of caution there, in the of course, as the act has been done, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And um, that will only run into problems, it seems to me, is if we fail to acknowledge in some way or other, if we misidentify the material in some way, or if that material contains stuff which uh, isn't covered by that CCI license. Otherwise, I don't see um, that there are things which, you know, which we shall need to be concerned with that thing. Well, applying what I said earlier, so if all the material you're doing with is facts... No, 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 this is non-factual. So if it's non-factual, then the subsequent things are... Note how, I mean, it, it is reasonable, but note how it, whatever you... Now we're falling back on <coughs> primarily relying on the text mail and the defense section from the line Are we? Are we not? Sorry, no, it's something with CC money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the the license, to do it anyway. So, you know, yes, yeah. Yeah. so the problems come if it isn't actually successful. You've got nested rights. <laughs> yeah. If you're one of the, uh, the, the high, low level of rights, in fact, is protected, then yeah. 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 So that's one of the But this is, uh, this is stuff which is uh, advertised by both the author and the publisher as being. Um, available under license to mm. uh, we use. We In that situation, them. you have a potential subsidiary contractual action against the uh, person who provided it from, so you have a contractual basis. But there will still be, potentially, if you produce an underlying copyright, a copyright action. Yeah. Uh, indeed. Um, so the two yes, things okay. are if it's mislabeled in some way or other, mm -hmm. or if you misrepresent. Or you didn't like the same thing, or uh, if there is a part of it to which that doesn't do well. Uh, now, um, we will obviously carry out as we get this theory, right? Um, and um, uh, I think we have to be prepared uh, to react uh, quickly and positively to any concern of potential rights holders. Let me give you a counter example, right? I published in. Um, uh, open access journals, I am not say from, I don't know if there are 20 papers there or something like that, and I discovered that um, uh, Springer, who owns Biomedsexual and a lot of us, had taken every image that passes through it, every image, and copyrighted it, and written copyright Springer over it, and was selling it for $60 per uh, image. So they had clearly breached this license. Um, and um, uh, and the, you know, and they have a product called Spring Images with about three million images, which is the scraping of all their content. Now, it's not the same thing, but what I'm saying is that they have not given any concern about my rights. What you might want to do as a as a, as a to, 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 going back to the before that example, what you described from doing is what you're seeking to do. Therefore, is rely on your supplier. Mm -hmm. To possess the rights they purport to possess. So, right. so what you might seek to do, therefore, is enter into a contractual relationship with your supplier, so that if it turns out they don't have the rights which they seek, which they maintain that they possess, you have an action against them. That protects you against the same. You may want to continue doing it, you may not want to do it, but that protects you against a, a potential action from your original mm -hmm. uh, The problem with that is that uh, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to just go ahead, they don't want to enter into a contract, but they've got lawful access to the material, yeah. and in any case, if they entered into a negotiation, the uh, supplier may well say, no, I'm not prepared to let you. So that's a downside, and that's an argument not to do that. In which yeah. case, you fall back mm -hmm. into uh, mm -hmm. animation mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. opinion that this is, you know, and they may not is, be selling what they say they're selling. Uh, and this is exactly mm -hmm. why I said that I think it ought to be an offence to claim copyright in something you don't have copyright yeah. in. Uh, precisely. Well, then I guess in the large part, that's going to be a problem where you've got oh, hybrid yeah. journals. I suspect it's less of a problem where you've got an entirely open access journal. Oh, yeah, sure. That yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clear from the outside of things. So, in that yeah, case, sure, the suppliers would be the suppliers of the. We only have your full access to the library. So that it would be the contract between the library and, and, and the library. And that is true. And that is true. And there will certainly be an indemnity clause in the contract between the library and Springer. So, so it might already be. Uh, which Springer is No, no, no. no. It, it will be an indemnity clause. So say, no, says, you uh, <coughs> if somebody is upset by something which they believe you are being, you the library or the library user, have been doing. Uh, stuff 
and they claim you're not allowed to do, we, Stringer, will handle the action on your behalf. It isn't quite the same thing as Stringer saying, we own this uh, when they don't. Yeah, the, 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 in this, it's now getting slightly complicated if you can identify the amount of parties you've got. So you have the original copyright owner, you have the, uh, the, the person who's bundled it, the course to have the yeah. you have the, 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 uh, the livelihood of that relationship with their supplier. Yes. And yes. The, the, the lines of intellectual property claim mm -hmm. are not aligned with the lines of contract claim. Absolutely. Um, and there you get very messy litigation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just just one thing to mention in, which is similar to what we're talking about, is is supposing the situation you can't identify the right owner after you don't that's one of the I'm just mentioning it. There are provisions which deal with those and they are to use the orphan works. Yes, yes. So you may want to this is slightly different, but just yeah. 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 So, um, uh, so those are those are uh, our proposed um, activities at the moment. Um, uh, we are starting with open access CC BY material, because we're developing the technology, and we want to make sure technology has a very low failure rate, and so forth. The other thing we plan to do with the, uh, I'll call, I'll call it the not. Let me call it the. Um, uh, you know, the closed works, because things which are behind the farm or a payroll. Um, what we plan to do is we plan to copy those legally uh, because we have access to the library, right? We will hold that uh, for long enough to uh, make um, an extraction of the facts from the copyrighted material. Uh, we will publish the facts under a liberal license and then we will discard the copyright and the copy of the copyright material. That's the current model. You, you might want. Are, are you to, with me? I'm completely with you. You might want to uh, read a case called Info. I don't know if you tell people to read cases. Some reason, <laughs> but you might want to read uh, two cases of the Court of Justice of the European Union. The reason why is this: is it? I mentioned earlier on the model of press conference, which is kind of what we're doing. But on a much yeah. scale. And those cases revolve around uh, an organisation which took a copy of newspapers for the purposes of then deriving the information from it, summarising, and then they threw away the original copies of the newspaper. And if you read those, you're going to get an idea of how the copyright law is applied in a completely not identical situation. But they did the difference because InfoPack involved commercial uh, activity. Commercial they were selling those. They were selling the yeah. yeah. I, mean, I know morals don't count for anything in um, <laughs> uh, in court. They might mitigate the sentence. <laughs> no, no, they do. They do. They do. Oh, they do take it into account. And uh, uh, you know, if, if if you're a pirate, yes, you're quite clearly have gone way beyond the law, and you will get you must get sent to prison for your activities, uh, where you're deliberately damaging the commercial interest of the rights holder. Well, if you're doing this for non-commercial research, that would be taken into account. I mean, it doesn't mean that you'd be let off the hook totally. It's, it's taken into account two things. Firstly, it's taken into account. The law is strict level to your intention. But your intention is important, for example, when they consider what punishment to take. Exactly. It's also relevant when they're considering whether to bring an action in the first place. Absolutely. Um, and to that extent, you know, if you've seen, take for example, the, the, the music industry's uh, use of copyright action against the consumers in America. There are PR concerns in taking action against people Absolutely. who are using material yeah. that would be too So that it is entirely yeah. Uh So, you know, we intend to have a takedown policy or mechanism, uh, both a, uh, a technology and a mechanism, you know, the policy. In the very few cases where there may, might be an honest violation of uh, rights holders' rights. Uh, if we are dealing with, you know, the, you know, there's about one and a half million articles published a year, uh, it's, it will not be uh, impossible for some uh, very occasional. I'm saying this to the camera because, you know, it's one and a half million uh, happen, and we will honestly respond rapidly to any request to take that. So that's and that helps as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Hey, can I ask you a question, Peter, about the embedded images, the photographs? Say. Let's just imagine you know, with a scholarly article. It has an image, and somewhere well down, maybe at the very end of the article, under acknowledgement is that we would like to thank Joe Bloggs for permission to reproduce. Will your uh, software pick that up and link it to? The answer is it is our intention to do that and fairly rapidly. Right. Um, so it's not a good thing. It's in the form. Uh, not necessarily. So, the, things we're, the only things we're considering here are figures. We're not considering, for example, sonnets or you know something which is contextual in the text. Yeah. We're, uh, we're taking the view that in science, the only things which are going to have uh, a value in their own are images, not um, uh, you know, not text. Um, so, what happens with a figure? You must tell me that the only thing which is going to trigger this problem on a significant scale is image. Copyright on part of the work. Yeah. Yeah. So what about if you know, an article quotes uh, a poem that's uh, another source? Um, it doesn't that's fine. It doesn't happen. I'm just raising it as no, it you can have nested literary copies. Yeah. I would say it, 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 it doesn't happen. That's fine. Yeah. If, 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 if you talk about humanity, 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 it will be a problem. Humanity. 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 <laughs> because people will say, I'm, I, I'm an art historian. I want to be able to reproduce this picture so I can show that the have got no arms and things like that. Uh, and you will, they will have to write off to the Louvre, they'll have to get permission. If they want to quote Wordsworth, they've got to go off and get somebody's permission to quote. In science, the process of uh, criticizing um, parts of uh, what people said has never, in my view, been subjected to copyright as a problem. No. I mean, quotes tend to be very short. The quotes tend to be very short if they are, and it's certainly not in any way analyzed. So another relevance there is an exception of new relevance of Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, the problem, oh, so, yeah, so, so uh, let's say that um, uh, somebody goes out and they um, study frogs and and what we uh, what we've got is we've got two uh, and it's a short paper. It's got pictures of frogs, right? And it's got a diagram of uh, you know frog height against frog jumping or something like that. Right. So one is a diagram and it contains dots or bar charts or whatever. Uh, the other is a picture of this frog. Now. The picture of the frog is copyright. Did you hear about the gorillas? The monkeys. Yes, yeah, yeah. the monkey self. Yes. 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 Uh, but that was copyright. Yes. Yes, indeed. Who was the first? So there is a potential problem in, in science. Uh, I mean, Ross is the expert on this. Uh, but um, uh, in science, you have to use photographs in many cases uh, to represent your raw data. So this is a picture of this piece of body, uh, geographical location, whatever, and you can see the form of that. That's the way science is done. The fact that it occurs in a it is necessary to put it in a journal, there may or may not be copyright acknowledgement uh, from the point if it was taken by the authors of the paper. Oh, well, that's a different matter. Yes. Um, we cannot unfortunately assume that all images um, in a paper are copyright of the author if they're not given to third parties, that's a problem. And a lot of authors will actually uh, use other images um, uh, actually without permission. I mean, that will happen. Um, and so forth. Uh, so we probably won't, we will be very cautious about what images we produce. On the other hand, there is a growing um, body of reproducing and images and uh, Ross has found all these images on uh, or whatever um, uh, and so forth. Um, that's separate from the Right, 
Mm-hmm. That sounds. So what we're identifying is we're identifying what materials are you copywriting and source where the right terms are and where the And you're identifying that there is a low level of uh, nested in you know, hierarchy of copyrights and literary material. Yeah. Uh, and um, even inside the database thing, yeah. you yeah. write a separate suit, generous writing material, collection material, which seems to be putting together and sticking into the, the, the article in question, so things like that, which is the potential, which can say, looking at pictures, diagrams, to summarise it. Diagrams are likely to be copyright if they are demonstrated the originality of the suit. But if they're not, if there's no possibility of it. The creative uh, exercise, the exercise of creative choices in the way that that diagram can be put down there and like Photographs are, photographs are subject to copyright if there is a, there's a low level of originality, originality in the composition. Um, I chose to light it like this. So the most, the, the most simple point of snap of the copyright is the copyright. But that thing which is involved with the application of nouns probably is. And the sorts of stuff you're talking about probably are because you know it's uh, it's not just gone. Yeah, it would involve skills. Right, bridge test, or European, European test is involved in the special range of creative choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they are probably subject to copyright. The fact that they're subject to copyright means you can then fall back on what you do with it if you just take the information from it. Yeah. The fact we come back to that. Yeah. Again, uh, what you're taking is not the thing which is copyrighted, protected, and therefore you're all right. But if you reproduce the air, the, 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 uh, something within the image, then you are at risk, and therefore you go back down to the exceptions. It's a hierarchy. I mean, one of our potential strategies, and also um, dictated by the technology to some extent, is that. Uh, we would um, uh, very possibly create a thumbnail of the picture and put it in the image. Creating yeah. yeah. links is no issue. Yeah. Um, that's a particular action to which may have been the infringement of the picture. Just a few of the Right, but what I'm talking about here is linked to the publicly visible material in a CC biopsy. <laughs> I think it's been difficult for a uh, public, but or, or most of the open uh, access publishers are well minded towards this end. Okay, um, leaving aside their attitude and the risk of litigation, look at it from a legal point of view. There is case law in America on the relationship between thumbnails and uh, full size things which are publicly available, which says that thumbnails are fair use. So America, you all right. Mm. In this jurisdiction, the relation between you know, linking itself, not necessarily on thumbnails, but the issue of what a link is in copyright terms, is something which was, is in the process of being resolved by the British Justice Indeed. Mm-hmm. At the moment, they're, it's in favour because they say that if something has been made available to the public, then creating a link is not an infringing act. However, there are concerns, so for example, if there are most paper concerns, if the link takes you to the paper, it is likely to be an infringing act. Uh, so that is an area of uh, ambiguity. In the law. So that's the law. Taking a, a, a policy decision about what you're likely to do with it, you need to be aware that there is this grey area here. And then you'll probably be all right, but you need to be aware that it's just Well, you know, we, we have, I think, uh, you know, a reasonable set of um, defences which are that if somebody objects found, they will take it down. Um, and uh, that will be a problem with policy. Uh, that um, uh, this is being done in a scientific context, and I think any publisher who argued that we could not link to something which they had publicly displayed on the web is going to suffer in the course of public opinion. I should say that we are not unknown in the community. Mm. You also, at my view, believe in your right, there is a little there is a yeah. But it all sounds, you know, I've put a disclaimer here. <laughs> this, uh, this is uninsured legal advice, uh, which is always bad, so if it's wrong, then you have no recourse against me. Um, Just like with me. No uh, recourse. It's okay, I know what the inside of a prison would <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're Do you? Okay. And the only thing, to, the only thing to, to, to mention which has occurred in this conversation so far is that the internet has been used in the jurisdiction. 
Yeah. And copyright laws, which we've covered, and it should be emphasized. Absolutely. We and particularly in this area. <laughs> and yeah, particularly in this area, particularly even within Europe. Um, so, you know, the well, levels of risk change. What well, you're doing is very similar, funnily enough, to what journalists and organisations do yeah. every day. We're well, dealing with nested rights, and dealing with people who may or may not be contiguous. We're the disseminators of the sending of information, largely to a public in many different jurisdictions around the world. So you are in a good company. Absolutely. And what's more, they have to do it uh, on an immediate basis. Yeah. They can't spend three months working out whether they've got... And are asking, asking for permission yeah. and waiting for permission. Now, what I could do, if it might be useful, is uh, I know one of the uh, rights advisors at the BBC, and I could put in touch with her, yes. and you could have a conversation with her. That's interesting. Uh, exactly. make, make sure that uh, Jenny yeah. goes... So if you pop me an email, it's going to be a That would be Jenny, yeah. contact at the BBC. Um, no, um, so, you know, we're aware of the things, we're not always aware of the people. I mean, you, you've come up with some wonderful additional stuff that we weren't completely aware of and so forth. Uh, Julia Reader in her um, article said that European copyright is stronger than real copyright. Indeed. And, and she is I trying to simplify it. I'm sitting here and I'm wondering whether, you know, I think as we're doing this, having conscious of the things I'm not mentioning, which I'm starting to work on today, which gets more. Well, as, as you say, it's all about this. I mean, we're doing this for an activity. Yeah. We're doing this for the public good. Uh, the downside is that it may be, um, whether we mean it or not, it may be disruptive of the current practice because we're introducing a new activity. And for example, uh, one of the contracts which Elsevier wanted to uh, get people to sign said at the bottom, you may not do anything which harms Elsevier in the market. Uh, We've got that one. <laughs> <laughs> cool thing could be that some publishers, particularly a big one like us, have its own plans for a text and data mining service of some sort or another. Which is what I think that's absolutely right. But I also think that there is kind of there is a there's a the art of the There's the judo approach. You know, if you feel that some of those companies are right, you know, throw their weight on it. Uh, you know, what you are doing gives them a PR positive yes. to succeed in the PR. Absolutely, I would have thought so. Yeah. So, you know, the more you can get them on the side and show what you're yeah. doing, it's, it's, it's so, so you they're good guys. Exactly. Then they're, they're the <laughs> well, there is no doubt that you, uh, there's an advantage to them if they adopt our technology and uh, the theology and so forth. Um, it is a concern for the industry, and there are parts of the industry of which they've published their great databases. Uh, and this is, in many cases, a more efficient way of creating a collection of books. I don't know, you say it's a more efficient way of seeing The reason I went to offer one there is obviously we're beginning to think about the fact we haven't talked much about the data. No, no, that's that's that's, 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 that's been brilliant. <laughs> uh, so, just as yeah. conscious of what you haven't said, as much as what you've said, yeah. aren't you? anyway, I mean, there's a limit to how you, you know, what, no. there's a limit to the practical utility of going into the possible legal minutiae. Yeah, I apologise. No, and what uh, I mean, we know we will never get an answer saying you can definitely do this. You might get an answer saying you'll be extremely poorly advised to do it, uh, but generally it will be this is what we think the risks are, and yeah, that's the way media lawyers work. They say, you know, it's your choice at the end. Yes, advise you Yeah, yeah. 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 and that's what we're doing here. Uh, so, just for the record, where, where are you physically located in the country? Uh, the Alison Richards building, which is on the next to the Uh Right, okay, so next to the huge glass building. Next to the, you know, stands to the 
Yeah. Indeed. Okay, well, we will meet again. Thank you very much for the next time. Always nice to see what you're doing all the time. Right. We'll have some in Yeah.